Om Ajnanati Mirandasya Gyananjana Shalakaya Shakshuru Meritam Yenatasme Shri Gurave Nama Gaurave Gaurachandraya Radhika Yetadaraya Krishna Ya Krishna Bhaktaya Tad Bhaktaya Ramo Nama Today we're going to speak about the Alvars. The Alvars are the spiritual ancestors of the Acharya in a Sri Sampradaya. There was uh, 12 Alvars, then Natamuni is the grandfather of Yamuna Acharya. Yamuna Acharya is a Shiksha Guru of Ramanuja Acharya. Then starting from Yamuna Acharya, Ramanuja Acharya, all the um, all Acharyas in the Sri Sampradaya. So there are 4,000 uh, verses written in Tamil language, which is called Nalai, Nalai, Nalaira Divya Prabandham. Uh, they are called the Vernacular Veda, written in ordinary language, Tamil. Um, Sometimes also it is called uh, the uh, uh, Tamil Veda, or Ubaya Linga Vedanta. There are two Vedanta. One is written in Sanskrit and another one is written in Tamil language. It's poetry filled with ideas from the Veda Upanishad, Itihasa, such as Mahabharata and Ramayan, Vaishnav Puranas, Pancharatra, and um, expressing very deep devotional meanings. The dates of the uh, Alvar in the uh, books of the Sri Sampradaya are extraordinary. They go all the way back to a Dwapara Yuga, that is uh, 5,000 uh, uh, 5, years ago or 6,000 years ago. Of course, modern uh, scholars disagree. They say it's about 5th to 9th century AD. But they are not even unanimous among themselves. They, uh, among some uh, speculation, they base themselves on the verse of Srimad Bhagavatam, which uh, says like this, Kalo Kalu Bhavishyanti Narayana Parayana Kvachin Kvachin Mahabhaga Dramideshu Chaburisha Tam Pravarani Nadiyatra Kritamalapavasvini Kavericha Mahabhaga Pratishicha Mahanidi. In the age of Kali, in the beginning of the age of Kali, person devoted to Narayan, Narayana Parayana will appear. They will be Mahabhaga, great devotees, great personalities, and they will be in South India, Dramideshu. Dramidadesh is South India. And they will be living next to uh, different rivers such as Tamprabarani, Kritamala, Pavasvini, Kaveri, Mahanadi. And interestingly, when we study the lives of the different Alvars, then um, each one of them was born next to one of these rivers. The word Alvar, so the, the, the modern scholar says because it is written there, then Sriman Bhagavatam must have been written after the Alvar because they don't believe in such thing as prediction. And they say, therefore, the um, Srimad Bhagavatam must be around the 9th century. But like I said, they, are, they disagree among themselves. But this is a different subject. Coming to our main subject about who the Alvars are, and specifically, we'll, we'll see the first three Alvars. The word, the word Alvar means plunged. Deep in God. Devotional songs inspired by the experience of God. The main preoccupation of Alvars is an ardent longing for direct communion with God, culminating with an uninterrupted divine service. It's a desire to see the Lord face to face. It is a natural desire in man. In the, in the West, we see St. Augustine in the 4th century, the Christian Saint Augustine has written a book about how to see God face to face. And this was also the desires of what you call Sufi masters to see God face to face. And for us, many of us became devotee because of that song of George Harrison, My Sweet Lord, I Really Want to See You. 
So this is a natural design man. Even those who are not looking for him, it is uh, they, they actually want this unending ananda pleasure. They, are, they cannot be satisfied with anything less, but they don't know. It is actually the real goal of human life. Like this other verse from the Srimad Bhagavatam is saying, Labha sudulabam midam bahusam bhavante marusham maratadam anityam mapiha dhira turnam yatitanapatedanum ritu yavan nishreya saya vishayan kalu sarvatasyat. This <coughs> human form of life is sudulabha, very rarely achieved, and therefore the goal of manush, of human life. Artadam is goal, is supreme goal in this world which is called Anitya, temporary, uh, is to find Nishriyasa, the ultimate good, not just Shriyasa, which is the good, but Nishriyasa, the ultimate good, because death, Mithyu, is always dancing on our head. We can die at any moment, and enjoyment, Vishaya, Vishaya Sarvata. It is everywhere in every species, even pigs. The hogs that we see in Vrindavan, they are enjoying being in the stool, eating stool. They really enjoy this. So therefore, we should find this ultimate goal of life. Everybody is looking for God, but they don't know. This is the sad, sad case of the human life. They don't know. The Alvars, they were not ordinary human beings. They were incarnations. The first four were incarnation of Vishnu's weapons. Pogya Alva was a council called Panchajanya. Buddha Alva was the uh, incarnation of the mass of Vishnu, Komadaki. Pe Alva was a sword of Vishnu, the uh, sword. And Til Marise, the fourth Alva, it was the chakra of Vishnu, the Sudarshan chakra. The first three Alva were not born in ordinary fashion. They had no human uh, beings, no human parents. They were born of flowers. The first one was born from the golden lotus. Then the second one was born from the jasmine Madhavi flower. Then the, the, the third one in a well at a, at a red lily. To a rational mind, the, all these stories seem fictitious. But we have to understand properly the theology of Avatar. It is one of the main aspects of Vaishnavism. Vishnu, the Supreme Lord, incarnate in different forms to protect his devotee and to protect also all the people in general and to destroy evil and the demons. This is what it says in Bhagavad Gita. Yada, yada, idharmasya, granil, bharati, bharata. There's two verses. Paritrayana, saludam, vinashaya, shadushkritam. So he comes to uh, protect the good in the people and destroy the evil. And in the Pancharatra literature, God incarnates, and it says, in human beings, especially in the age of Kali, to infuse special power into selected ones. So or, not ordinary people, but some uh, human beings are being inspired by God, who makes them function in the world as sages, saints, and preceptors, endow this extraordinary spiritual power. This is called, in the Sri Sampradaya, this is called Anupravesha. We call it Shaktyavesha Avatara. Anupravesha means God enter into you. And Vedanta Deshika, who is the grand grand disciple of Ramanuja Acharya, he said that Narayan. Uh, Bhagavan Vishnu, Narayan, has assumed a new series of ten avatars in the form of the Alvar in order to teach the essential teachings of the Vedas in a language that everybody could understand. Vernacular, meaning the Tamil language. In our case, it would have been in English, uh, which is the language which is the commonly accepted and understood by most people. So there are supernatural birth and miraculous powers uh, I explain in this way, they are avatars of Vishnu. The first three Alva, Poiga, Buddha, Pai, they uh, were contemporary. They actually were born each in a um, day, you know, the first one on Wednesday, then the second one on, on Thursday, and the third one on Friday. 
and they didn't meet at first. But one night there was a big storm and it was raining, pouring rain. And so the first one, he took shelter into a, um, a cave. Uh, it was a, a poiga, I think. He took shelter in a cave. Um, it was a small cave. But then very shortly after, Buddha Alva, he came and he said, Can I come in? He says, Yes, if there's room for one, there's room for two. Come in. So he came. And then the third one, Pe Alva, came and he said, Can I come in also? And they said, Well, this cave is big enough for one person to lay down, for two person to sit, and for three person to stand. But okay, you can come in. So they, well, all three together, jam like this and they start talking and seeing that actually they share many common things. But they realize after a short while that the fourth person has come without being invited and they felt a little disturbed. Well, why is this fourth person coming? We didn't invite him. He didn't uh, ask us anything. Then there was a lightning and they saw Vishnu has come. And when they saw Vishnu, each of them start saying beautiful verses and this is the Alvar they wanted to see God face to face and they saw God face to face and so therefore all that came out from their mouth was beautiful poetry glorifying Vishnu these are the three Alvars how they met the fourth Alvar is called Tirumalise Alvar he was born as a lump of flesh no, uh, no legs, no hands just, you know, some deformed head and everything, so the parents discarded him. But then, Lakshmi Devi, she was with her husband uh, Vishnu, and she came on the way, and they heard the cry of the baby that was abandoned, so she picked him up and started feeding her breast milk to him, and immediately then, then arms start growing out of his body, and legs, and, and, and hands, and everything, and he uh, was raised in that way. Very early in life he was adopted by uh, a couple that couldn't have children and very early as an infant he was always speaking about God, about Vishnu. And he also learned many 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 different yoga. He was actually a Siddha. There's a tradition in South India of the 18 Siddhas and they, they say that those Siddhas live in the Himalayan mountains. And uh, this uh, Tiru Malisa Alvar, according to the legend, he lived 4,000 years. In the Himalaya, some of those Siddhas are said to be very, very old. Maybe if you have read autobiography of a yogi by Paramahamsa Yogananda, he speaks of this Babaji. Babaji is actually his spiritual master of the spiritual master, of the spiritual master, the original master of the uh, Sampradaya, of Yogananda. And he says that this uh, Babaji, he's very, very old, many centuries, maybe 1,000, 4,000, 5,000 years old, but he looks like 16 years old. And Prabhupada told us, and at Kuma Mela festival, he told us, many of these people you see, they are not ordinary people. They are yogis that come to the Himalayas, they have mystic power. Be careful, don't offend any of them. So he was like an uh, accomplished yogi. But one time, uh, this one of the other Alva, previous Alva, Pe Alva, he wanted to convert him. He says, this is like a great yogi. He knows so many different, uh, he has so many power, and he's actually, before he was called Tirumarise, he was called Shiva Vakya. So he, uh, Pei Alvar, he had a garden of flowers and trees, and he uprooted everything and planted them back upside down. And he started watering them to make them grow. So it happened that Tirumarise, who was at that time Shiva Vakya, he saw this. And he start laughing and he say, are you mad? How can you grow the trees and the flowers this way if you plant them upside down? So, Pei Alvar, he says, I'm not mad, but you are. Because you do everything upside down. You worship all kinds of devata. They cannot give you anything. And I'm showing you that actually you have to water the root 
in order to make everything grow. The root is Vishnu. And he was so turned turn over by this um, um, challenge that, um, uh, that uh, Payalva gave him that he actually changed completely his life and he became also a great devotee of Vishnu. Uh, he wrote more than a thousand verses glorifying Vishnu, glorifying the avatar of Vishnu, glorifying the different places, all of the four Alva, that's what they did. And later on, Shiva came to him and uh, said, Oh, you are a very good devotee of Vishnu. I want to give you a boon. So this uh, Tirumarise Alva, he said, Oh, can you give me release from birth and death? So Shiva said, No, I cannot do this because Vishnu can do that. So he said, Choose another boon. So then Tirumarise said, Okay, maybe you can... Uh, um, change the karma of the person who is about to die. You tell him, you're not going to die today, you're going to die tomorrow. It's a trick, you know? Like, if you're not going to die tomorrow, you're going to die tomorrow. Tomorrow you'll say, I'm not going to die today, I'm going to die tomorrow. It's a way of tricking, like Hiranyakashipu, to try to get immortality. So Shiva says, I cannot change the karma of anyone. Choose a reasonable boon. So I say, okay, um, I have this needle. Can you help me to put the thread through the head of the needle? So Shiva felt very offended. He said, what kind of a nonsense is this? And then fire start coming out of his third eye. But Tirumari said he was totally protected because he was a devotee of Vishnu. And he counteracted this fire. So therefore, Shiva called him Bhaktis, Bhaktisar, the ocean or the cream of Bhakti, because he was totally protected by Vishnu. So, next time we'll speak about Nama Alva, one of the most important Alva, because he was actually in Madhurya Rasa. He was depicting himself as a young Nayaki, a gopi, in love with Krishna. And similarly also, uh, Goda Alva, who was the only woman, also described herself as a woman who wants to marry Krishna. This is an an interesting because he, they wrote in ecstatic mood, the ecstasy of the gopis in love with Krishna. This we'll see next time. Nama Alva, then after, Goda Alva. Banshe Kalpa, Tarubya Cha, Kripa Sindhu, Bhyayi Vacha, Pachitanam Pavanebhyo, Vaishnavibhyo, Namo Namaha.